Hi all, welcome to module P10. In this module, we'll be looking at how we can connect our web app to the database. And we'll also be doing a small introduction to SQL injection. So, so far we've understood how to do basic data modeling and how to use a DBMS. We've also built a web app that takes data from an object inside the source code of the web app and uses the data inside that object to create templates so that it can render pages dynamically. We've also understood that we need to separate data and code concerns and why a database is required for a typical web application. We're going to now take this combined knowledge and actually build an application that connects to the database. So the first thing that we need to do is go clean up our database and remove all the tables so that we can start from afresh. We'll have to connect our web app to the database. So for that, we'll be using the node Postgres package, also known as the PG package on NPM. We'll be using that to help us connect to the database. So let's head to our coding console. Now, what we want to do here is connect to the database and to test that out, let's say that we are going to go to a particular endpoint and on this endpoint we want to see that we are able to um, make a select request and return a response with the results, right? So let's head to our database and um, I have cleaned up my database, so there's no tables here. Let me just quickly create a table called test. And let's say that has an ID, which is an integer and a name, which is some kind of a text field. So let's save this, right? Let's uh, make ID the primary key. Let's add an item here. Right, so we've got two items here. Now what we're going to do is try to connect to this database. So we're going to use the node Postgres package and the best way to do this is to quickly go to the documentation. So if you go to the node Postgres GitHub page, you'll see that there's something called a wiki and they have examples written here. So let's look at the example app, right? So the way they ask us to use the Postgres library is to make a connection pool uh, and after creating connection pool, create a database configuration. Right? The database configuration contains the host name, the username, the password, the database and, and then make a request. Right? So let's try to do the same thing. Let's create a pool. Right. And after we make a pool, we need to create a configuration. So let's create a var config. So we need to have a user field. Now we know that our user is Coco98. We can have um, the database field. We know that our database is also Coco98. Now we would like to have the host, which is the host where the DBMS is hosted. So that's db.iman.hasuraapp.io. We know that the port is 5432. Now we need the password of the database. Now if, if we enter the password here, then anybody who has access to our source code will be able to access this password. So we can use an environment variable and you can read up on how environment variables work. But the idea is that when you deploy this code on the server, the IMAD hosting environment makes sure that this environment variable is available for you to inject into your app. So that means that when your code is deployed, at that time, this environment variable will be available. And to access this environment variable, we need to say process.env. So this one, so this line of code says that use the environment variable that is available called db password, right? So it will use this password. Now let's go back to our test db function. Now let's add this code. So note this instruction that the pool, the connection pool is created outside the server request so that the connection pool is created as soon as the app is started and not when a new connection happens. So let's uh, copy this code. So that means our pool is now ready. Now we're going to make a query. So pool dot query select star from test 
and once we have the result so in case we have an error we return a 500 status code and we say that we make the error available right and in case there's no error then we would like to then we would like to send the result as a json string right so let's see what this looks like let's commit this let's go to our application let's go to test db and you can see that the output and our result is here so you can see that two rows are available right so in our in the object that is returned by the database we have the command we have the row count that tells us two rows have been selected and we have the actual rows which is an array of objects right so if we want to just get the array of objects we can do result.rows and then you can see that just the rows have been made available right so now let's use this idea and try to change our articles function that instead of having this gigantic articles object we just load the articles from the database so the first thing that we need to do is model this data right so that this is the object that we want so let's try to make sure that we can capture this data in our database so i head to my database and i'm going to create a new table i'm going to create a table called article so every article has an id which is an integer which i will auto increment i'll have a title which is what appears in the url bar and then I'll have the heading, I'll have a date, so heading is text, date I can create as a date type, and content is text. So let's just check if that is all the fields, we have title, heading, date and content, four, we have four here and we have ID which we can use as a primary key. So let's quickly set that as a primary key. And let's add a value there so let's leave this as default it will automatically choose a particular value let's say this is article 1 article 1 and let's set the date to 2016 0601 right and let's set the content to be testing the database right so let's save this save has gone through now let's try to replace this article in our code right so what we'll do is i'm going to change the endpoint to be slash article slash so that means that slash article slash article one is going to render article one now this part of the function will stay the same because this is templating that particular data so we don't have to change the create template function but we need to change the data that we're getting right so what we need to do is that we need something called the article data object and assuming that we have the article data object which somehow contains the value from the database we're going to replace it here so let's do that first right now our job is to try to get the article data object right so let's leave this and let's make a similar query to what we had so let's say pool.query select star from article where title equal to right and now we want to get the title which is the article name so this is article 1 we want to find out where title equal to article 1 get that particular object and display it here so whenever we have a string in SQL we have to use single quotes to match but since we're already using single quotes for a JavaScript string we can't do that so let's convert the JavaScript string to double quotes and we effectively want to do something like this right but this value is going to come from the parameter so it will be rec dot params dot article name right so we're going to use the same article name here right and we use that here to select the particular article and let's say that we once we get the result let's define what we want to do with the result again if there is an error so let's handle the error by right. 
right so we'll display the error and in case there's no error it's still possible that when we tried to fetch this there was no title that existed so that means that if result dot rows dot length is equal to zero then in that case we should say 404 that means that we didn't find the resource that was being requested and we'll say article not found but in case we do have something then we'll say article data is equal to result dot rows of zero right, which is the first element and now that we have the article data we can template it right so so let's see this in action let's go to slash articles slash article one right so the error that I'm getting is that column one does not exist which means that somehow one is being interpreted as if it's a column name right and if you go back here you can see that what's happening is that it's saying this query is coming up as something like select star from article where title equal to article one and and what is happening is that it's taking one as a column and that's because this is coming up as the minus operator right so it's thinking this is a minus operator and it's trying to subtract two values. So what we need to do is to make sure that this is around a single quote, right? This is what we want to do. So what we're going to do is we'll do add a single quote here and make sure that we close a single quote here, right? So now this string will be equivalent to what we want here, right? So let's save this and see what we get. There we go, and our article one is loaded. Um, if you look at the date format, it's printing out the entire date, right? And that's because the date object is being the date object is being rendered as um, as a JavaScript date object. So to convert that into just date, we can use to date string, right? So let's see what that looks like. And you can see that it looks much neater. So that means that we've now connected to a database and we're able to load data here. So let's quickly take our articles object and replace all the information. So the article one content was here. So let's edit this and change article one's content. Let's do that for article two. This is the date 2016 September 10th so that's going to translate to 2016091110 so the format that we use here is year 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 month month dd so that's the format in which I've written my date you can save this as well right so we have two articles and we can use that to copy more articles right and and you can notice that I don't need to restart my app as soon as I refresh this page um, because it fetches the data dynamically from the database, it's getting the value here. Similarly, if I now request for two, article two also loads, right? However, this is not particularly safe and let's hack this app and see where there's a huge security flaw in our application. So what's happening here is that a SQL query is being generated dynamically according to the value the user enters in the URL. Now, because we should never trust what the user does, the user can actually be smart and instead of entering a string that, that we expect is going to be the name of the article, the user can actually enter a different string altogether. For example, what the user can do is put another single quote, right? And put a semicolon, which will end this select query entirely and then create his own query here. So maybe he can make a delete query here, right? And um, 
just to make sure that the query is a valid query there's another single quote here so he can do where and then because this single quote is ending here right he just has to make sure that there's a single quote that's available here right and then this when it's joined by our line of code here it will become a valid sql query right so let's see uh, what happens if we do this so let's go to articles let's put a single quote here right let's put a space and let's say delete from articles where a equal to a our table name is called article so delete from article where a equal to a so notice that i'm putting a single quote here because the other single quote will come from our line of code right so let's see what that let's see what happens if i do this i need to restart my application let's try making that query again and it says article not found right um, and we don't know why it's saying that but let's try to go to article one and you can see that article one is no longer found and if you go and refresh your database you can see that all the rows from your database have been deleted right so because we trusted the user and whatever input was given by the user we just inserted into our own sql query the user inserted something malicious and was able to execute an arbitrary sql query on our database right this is unfortunately a very common way that is very easy to protect from right but it's a very common way for hackers to make an attack and they can use that to select data they can use that to delete data and they basically have access to our entire database to do what they want right so the way to protect ourselves from this every good library will give us a way of inserting parameters inside our sql query in a way that the parameter is safe so for example what a good library will do is that it will convert our single quote and escape that by putting a backslash right so this is what the this is what the good library will do that means that this entire portion will be taken as if it's a title and this title will be matched and and if no match is found no article will be shown right so let's see how node postgres does that so if you want to see how it does a parameterization of queries you can see here that what they do is they use something like a dollar so they say dollar one and dollar one is the first element of an array right so what we can do here is that we can say title equal to dollar one right remove the single quote and then give the second argument as an array which will be rec dot params dot article name right and then have the third argument as a function so this value will now safely be inserted inside our sql query so let's save this right and let's insert another item here And let's go to article one. Now let's try to make the query that we were trying to make, which is delete. And it says article not found. But if I go and refresh this, our article is still there, right? Which means that it's trying to actually search for this string and it does not find this string as a title, right? Which means that our database access is now safe, right? So this way of using a library to make sql queries is extremely important we should never make a query to the database by trusting user input and inserting that into our query because the user can escape outside our query and then start making random queries to the database so now once this is done we can actually go ahead and delete the articles object right so we've deleted the articles object and we've saved um, quite a few lines of code and we've made our entire articles data dynamic. In the next module, we'll be looking at how to implement login logout and user functionality and how to implement sessions.